Okay, let's go ahead and get started tonight. Uh, tonight is uh, Wednesday, June 19th, and this is going to be the City Council meeting. We're going to start off with the invocation given by Pastor Clayton Paul of the uh, Kings River Hope Church, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand. All right, let's, uh, let's pray. God, thank you. Thank you for, uh, for this day. Thank you for this space, for the opportunity to gather. God, I'm grateful for, uh, for each person that you have brought here, um, that you have appointed to these positions to help lead and serve and care for um, the, just this, this great city. God, I pray for the agenda, for what is set for this meeting. God, I pray for wisdom. Um, I pray for, for clarity. God, I pray that you would help um, each person to know uh, to have a clear sense of, um, of how to work for the best interest of this city, for all of, um, all of those who live and work and reside in this space. God, I pray for this evening, for this meeting, that your will would be done, um, and God, that it would bring honor and glory ultimately to Jesus. I pray this in your name. Amen. Amen. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we'll call this meeting to order tonight. Uh, tonight is the joint meeting of the Kingsburg City Council, the Board of Directors of the City of Kingsburg Public Finance Authority, and the Board of Directors of the Successor Agency of the Kingsburg Redevelopment Agency. Can we please get a roll call? Councilmember Present. Councilmember Here. Councilmember Smith. Here. Here. Thank you. Next up is the public comments. This is a time for citizens to come forward to address the City Council and the respective Boards of Directors on any issue that falls within our jurisdiction that is not listed on the agenda. A maximum of five minutes will be allowed for each speaker. Do we have anyone here tonight for public comment? Seeing none, we'll move on to item three. To approve the joint meeting agenda, actions by council and the respective board of directors to approve the joint meeting agenda or to make modifications. Items can be added to the joint meeting agenda and that's constrained by state law. Can I get uh, a motion? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Next up is presentations. We have none. And item five, the joint meeting consent calendar. These items are considered routine in nature and are to be placed on the consent calendar. They will be considered as one item and voted upon in one vote unless individual consideration is requested. Each vote in favor of the consent calendar is considered and recorded as a separate affirmative vote in favor of each action item listed. Approval of the consent calendar items include reading recitals, ordinances by titles only, and adoption of recommended actions contained in city staff. Tonight we have consent items 5.1 through 5.8. Do we have any members of council that would like to pull any consent items tonight? Do we have any members of staff that would like to pull any items? Mr. Mayor, I, yes. I, um, I believe that you voted um, no on item 5.4. Correct, and my, my intent tonight is uh, I'll probably not pull that, but I'll just register a no vote again without pulling it. Well, you, in order to do that, in, in order to do it, you have to pull it. Okay. Yeah because otherwise the, you'd have to vote against the entire consent count. Okay. okay. Do we have any members of the public who would like to pull any items? Okay. Then we will pull item 5-4. Um, aside from 5-4, uh, can I get a motion for the remainder of the agenda? I'll make a motion for 5-1, 5 5.2, 5.3, 5.5, Second. Through 5.8. Oh, sorry. 5.7 and 5.8. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? 
Okay, those pass. Uh, 5.4, this is to waive the second reading of the ordinance. Um, and really with this, I just want to register a no vote on this, uh, unless anybody has any further comments on this. So it's just one, one no vote. Um, motions for approval? I'll make that motion to approve 5.4. Second? Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. One opposed, motion carries. Thank you. Thank you for the clarification also. Okay, we will move on to tonight's regular calendar. 6.1, the public hearing. This is consideration of the general plan amendment. 2024-01 pertaining to the City of Kingsbury housing element and accompanying CEQA determination. Staff report prepared by Community Development Director Holly Owen, and this is a City <coughs> Council only action. Thank you. Sorry for the confusion. That's a little bit, That's right. a little bit wonky, but we'll get through it. That's all right. Good evening, Mayor Purcell Jr. and uh, City Council, Holly Owen, Community Development Director. Uh, before you tonight is a consideration of General Plan Amendment 202401 pertaining to the City of Kingsburg housing element and the accompanying CEQA determination. The recommendation is that you adopt uh, Resolution 2024032 that approves the CEQA determination, which is an addendum to the City of Kingsburg General Plan EIR for the 2023-2031 housing element update and approving the General Plan Amendment 202401, amending the City's General Plan by inclusion of the 2023-2031 housing element as required by state law. Just an executive summary is uh, before you too, the housing element is a state mandated uh, eight year policy document. Uh, you can, you are required to update it every eight years. It can be on different cycles for different cities and different counties, but ours is now, and that's why we are undergoing this. Um, it's a component of the Kingsburg general plan. So there are a number of elements in the, in the everybody's general plan. Housing element is the only one that's really required by state law. And um, by our actions tonight, we'll be uh, removing the old uh, housing element that is uh, embedded in the general plan and uh, adopting this new one, which will keep us in compliance with current law. Uh, it will reset some of our policies and will include our uh, regional housing needs allocation numbers. Uh, it is uh, the culmination of a, uh, a multi-jurisdictional housing element effort. I think we've discussed this before. It came to you in April of 2022. Uh, this was uh, done for the first time eight years ago with uh, 13 or 12 or 13 other cities. This time there's the 13 cities, including Kingsburg, uh, with the County of Fresno and the City of Fresno uh, to uh, update uh, collectively uh, their housing element. It um, comes to you in two sections. There's a regional uh, section, which is uh, a, a hyperlink in your uh, staff report. Uh, that includes general policies for the region um, that we all share. And then we all have our uh, separate chapters, um, which is an individual analysis of uh, sites in our own cities, uh, policies, and programs. So we, what we will be doing, we, we adopt both, but um, we'll probably be referring on going forward to, to our own individual Kingsburg chapter. Um, prior to adopting this housing element, uh, we are required to have it reviewed by um, Housing and Community Development. That's the state department that oversees this effort. Uh, we've gone uh, through two formal reviews. Uh, they sent a letter in April of this year uh, saying we are in substantial compliance. Uh, and so that sets in motion this process where we bring this to you tonight for review and, and adoption. Um, any changes that we may make would, would have to, would, would put us basically at the end of the line again. So um, we, we have uh, we've come this far. We've gone to Planning Commission on uh, the 9th of May, and they have uh, recommended uh, to you the, the adoption of, of this. Uh, the the um, foundation of the housing element is uh, the regional housing needs allocation, this RENA number that you hear uh, described once in a while. 
Um, the explanation of this is on page 390 in your packet if you want to get a further understanding of how this RENA number is arrived at. Um, it, it, it basically is a filter down process that starts at the state level and then goes to your local uh, MPO, which is for us is uh, Fresno COG. And there's a lot of data analysis and um, meetings that are held to determine uh, the, the, number of, uh, the number of units that we are all assigned. So uh, the analysis, the data analysis and the, the land use, the sites analysis is done then for every individual, uh, every individual city. Uh, the, I will also call attention to your, the stakeholder reviews. I thought that was pretty interesting. It's on page 335 uh, of, your, uh, of your packet. Uh, that is uh, the interviewing of uh, people who, about uh, affordable housing in the area. And uh, some of those comments are statewide comments about the challenges that we all have in meeting uh, the housing needs uh, in the state of California. Uh, they, it was not only advocates that were interviewed, but it was also the um, building industry associates representative. So you got a, a bit of a range of comments about what they view as uh, challenges uh, to housing. Now, when it comes to Kingsburg, um, we, do, we do pretty well. We don't have water challenges, for instance. We, you know, we have good supply of water. And um, I think we have, there's a lot of obstacles that other jurisdictions have to, to uh, providing housing that, that we, we don't necessarily have. Uh, we are also ahead of some of the policies that are already in the new element. Um, I have to re do a progress report every year um, to the state saying how we're doing on the policies and goals and we're already uh, moving ahead with pre-approved ADU plans. That was one of the requirements. Uh, we've talked to a consultant who will, at no cost, per, uh, look at providing us objective standards, which is like design standards that can be objectively applied to projects, not not subjectively applied. And that is that's a that's sort of a uh, an important distinction that is being made by the state about what a what a city can and can't do about uh, how a project looks. Um, and then we also have um, uh, gone uh, this week to site plan review for the 99 unit affordable housing, senior affordable housing project that I think we, we uh, gave allocations to for the last meeting. So that will hopefully work in our favor to meet some of our RENA numbers for lower income housing. So uh, with that, I think I mentioned that the, we had, uh, this all started in April of 2022. Uh, we had a bunch of, we had several joint sessions uh, and then at the Planning Commission on May 9th and uh, that, that really concluded our public outreach process and our, our public hearing process. And um, you have a number of attachments in your staff report and that, uh, oh, I should mention the environmental review which is an addendum to the EIR that was prepared by the consultant. So that has um, been included also. Uh, for your review and recommendation. That concludes my overview. Uh, I am here to answer any questions. Uh, Amy Sensheimer from PlaceWorks, who has been our ABLE consultant throughout this uh, process, uh, is here also to give a very brief PowerPoint and answer questions too. This concludes uh, my presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we will uh, continue with this public hearing. Do we have any council discussion? Questions? Holly, just some clarification. You just mentioned, you just threw out there about how a project looks, that the state has some opinions on how that is implemented. Is that, how is that going to impact us? Well, I think that that, that, that will be um, a, a matter of uh, conversation with the consultant. We have we have the ability and to ask for certain design standards uh, to be met as long as it's not viewed as a constraint to, to housing. Um, I think it's probably, uh, the, the goal is to set up an expectation um, not only for the applicants but for staff to be able to 
have a little bit more, a more formal sort of checklist or, you know, a, a, an easily understandable uh, set of standards. Um, so um, that will ideally remove any thoughts that it might be arbitrary or it may, it may change from one, you know, if, if staff changes or, you know, are the requirements going to change? So um, a lot of cities have gone away from an architectural board of review. A lot of it has to do with the people you can find to sit on those boards. But some of it is, is a, a difference in opinion over time as to what, you know, what, what Swedish design really looks like. You know, and we, and we have ourselves seen uh, changes uh, over time. So, uh, so working with that consultant, you know, I'm not going to, you know, don't intend to leave any of that behind, um, but I want to make sure that we meet um, what would be considered the objective standards. And that would be uh, ADUs, multifamily housing, and probably single family residential too. So. Okay, thank you. Welcome. Holly, I had a question. Um, it says the Kingsbury housing element will substantially, will substantially comply with state housing element law. So if we approve this document tonight, is that the final, final step and the element is approved or it goes to one more final step to the state and then the state evaluates it once again? <laughs> that would be a, a question for a consultant, but my, uh, my understanding of this process is they've, they've had their chance to review, they've okay. had their chance to comment, they've, okay. they've made different comments over time, and that uh, once it, it, it enters this stage, you know, this is, this is our final, this is our final offer here. So I'd be surprised, let's just say, if, if something uh, new uh, was added. Um, but I will let Amy um, address that when, when she does her presentation. Okay, too. fair, thank you. We're also, uh, all of us collectively, just a little late to get this done. And I think that the, how the HCD is, is uh, understanding of that. Um, part of that is just the process of getting through um, consideration of policies and goals and objectives and sites and all that, but part of that is um, is there is there review time that's not necessarily you know they they're mandated to review uh, quickly, but um, they have a lot of they get a lot of paperwork, they get all the cities and all the counties, you know, at one time or another. So, anyone else? I have one question that's going to be kind of more specific for you. You're the expert in this here in the city amongst us. Uh, you've been in the weeds with this. Is there anything that you see in here that you think is in any way going to diminish where we're going? You've sat through our meetings. You know where we're going, trying to enhance the Kingsburg experience. Is there anything that you see specifically that you think could hinder that, that we should be concerned of? I think the most of the requirements are 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 ones that we can comply with without losing, you know, what, what we value and what our brand is. Um, I think part of that is just careful consideration and, and, and uh, communication uh, at the very beginning uh, to set expectations about allocations, about uh, design standards. You know, we are very clear uh, with uh, applicants, especially with subdivisions, when they come in, you know, what we, we say, look, this is, there, you know, we have a, we have a brand. And we and we honor that, and we're building neighborhoods. And so, you're going to need to open your playbook a little bit if you don't have enough housing models, or there, you know, there's this allocation process you have to go through. But, you know, we're here to to have that conversation with you. So I think, you know, if if we have, it's helpful to have consistent uh, messaging, and that's my that's my job, and that's my role. So. Appreciate it. And I know we are behind, but you know at our COG meetings we go through these, and we may be behind as far as the state goes. But that's that state mandates to keep getting pushed down. That's not. I don't want anybody to get mistaken that you guys are behind in your work. You're not. You guys are doing everything no. on the timeline that you should. Thank be. you. No, it's not. It's I don't think, and that's not to imply that, that the consultants are behind. No, it no, was. No. It's it's just been a very interesting uh, cycle to go through this time, and I think we all agree that it's that it's uh, this for. For some reason, this last couple of years has been uniquely challenging. So, um, you know, you learn every time you go through these, and laws change. You know, increasingly, the legislature does a lot of bill writing on housing. 
and some of that is is not possible. But it is, you know, but we have to consider what gets passed as law and respond accordingly. So. We appreciate you. I know this is a lot of hard work on Thank your you. end and in Sullivan Thank especially, so we appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, do we have any other council discussion? If not, I'll open it up. Is there any members of the public that would like to speak on this? Okay, we'll close the public comment and bring it back to council if there's anything from uh, council or staff. Do we have another presentation? Presentation. Sure. <coughs> Is this with Amy? <coughs> come on up. Thank you for coming. Yeah, arrow buttons to come back. Just here. Good evening, Mayor and members of the council. As Holly said, I'm Amy Sinsheimer with PlaceWorks. I'll start by responding to the a little more to your question, if you don't mind. Um, so conditional certification letters are um, a great thing because what that means is if you don't make any substantive changes to the document before adoption, then once it's adopted and submitted for that final 60-day review, the state has said they will approve it um, at the at the end of that time or earlier, depending on how quickly they can write their letter. So um, you're in very good shape. If there are you know, things that you want to consider changing, we can talk about that tonight. But that's, that's what the letter means. So I'll, I'll go pretty quickly here. Holly covered a lot of things, and I know you have a lot to, to get through tonight. But just to give you kind of an overview, um, here's our list of things we want to talk about tonight. And the housing element is, um, as Holly said, part of your general plan. Uh, you're on an eight-year schedule, and you're planning for this fair share of housing that all cities and counties are responsible for as part of this process. Uh, here is the list of the contents of both the regional and the local section. Uh, here's some overview of the outreach that's been done on the project. Uh, in the earlier phase, as Holly mentioned, before the review of the document with the state began, a series of reviews. Here you can see the regional housing needs numbers for the whole county. And here's how things ended up in your draft in terms of actually having sites that can plan for those numbers. So basically you have zoning in place uh, and also accessory dwelling units can be projected to meet that number. And here's a map of where those sites are in the city. And some of them are different colors because they're projects that have already been approved for housing as opposed to sites that could potentially develop with housing later. So kind of just want to focus on what we heard from the state on your document after the first draft. So. Uh, the outreach piece of the document requires us to summarize all the outreach that has happened and the input received. Um, and we also talked about, well, how, how was that outreach addressed in any revisions to the document? Um, there was some additional quantification of demographics and housing characteristics in the uh, background report section, in addition to more information about facilities that serve homeless folks. Um, on the sites piece of the work, uh, there were some projects that got moved to the sites inventory based on the state's comments, kind of a technical thing. Uh, additional analysis was done on the sites to make sure that how many units we said could be built in the document made sense from the state's perspective. They have a lot of uh, comments on that these days. And then our, there are four sites that are proposed to have increased densities um, in one of the programs, and we'll get into that a little bit more. Uh, site number 105 was added during the revisions and that's the site where the project that Holly just mentioned is proposed uh, for the senior project. Uh, we also updated information on pending annexations because that had changed during the housing element update and expanded some discussion of projecting accessory dwelling units. Uh, we added additional information about standards and the process for residential development in some of the mixed use and form based districts. We added a new piece that uh, requires cumulative impact of development standards. This is another new requirement from the state to look at all your different development standards, height, setbacks, et cetera, and how would they 
either help or not help with housing development. Uh, we updated some of the allowed uses in, uh, that are related to housing to make sure that's explained correctly in the housing element. Uh, emergency shelter zoning law has changed in recent years, so we updated some things to address that. Uh, there was some additional analysis of design review standards and also some added construction cost info. So fair housing is a new section of your housing element this time. And this is in response to a newer state law. Uh, the state is very focused on this section and this analysis, which is pretty large if you took a look at it. Uh, we updated some of the data just to make sure we had the current information for the city and county. We added more analysis to access to opportunity in Kingsburg, specifically related to transit, housing, and education. And some of this is within the city, some of this is regional, depending on you know, what is actually available. And also we added some more local knowledge of housing conditions and homelessness. In addition, we added more information about um, outreach that was related to the fair housing analysis and also updated the sites and some other pieces of this section as the sites inventory changed during the draft process. Finally, we added on the regional side more information on transit and public health uh, resources. So the programs section is really where you're going to be implementing um, your housing element moving forward. So this is similar to your other general plan elements where you have actions or programs. So we had changes to programs listed here. Programs 5, 12, and 13 actually had new actions or different actions added. So program 16, uh, we'll have another slide on. This is this program includes zoning code amendments on different topics, including emergency shelters, definition of family in the zoning, residential care facilities, transitional and supportive housing, um, site area standards, parking standards, and then the rezoning of the four sites to increase densities to allow for more housing on those sites in order to meet the city's arena. And we'll get into a little more detail on that in a minute. Um, the other substant, more substantive change was Program 22 related to the objective design standards work that Holly mentioned a minute ago. Uh, program 30 had some edits to have more commitments made, so more actions in this program. This is a fair housing related program. And then we added two new programs at the end of your programs list. Uh, both related to fair housing comments from the state. So one was to have more actions related to neighborhood improvements, and the other one is to look for opportunities for housing on sites that are owned by religious institutions or actually sites that are community facilities. So uh, looking for ways to identify housing opportunities. All of the programs on this slide had additional changes in terms of objectives or the time frame of the program. And then program 16, as I mentioned, has this piece that is related to meeting the arena, and this is in what they call the lower income category. So this is the higher density uh, part of the sites. That's what the state sees as suitable for uh, lower income or uh, multifamily development. It's not always lower income, but that's how it works in the housing element analysis. So sites 47, 48, 102, and 103 are proposed to have an increased density of 25 dwelling units a acre, and because they're being used for this purpose in the housing element, state law says that they need to have a minimum density of 20 dwelling units a acre and, re and allow residential uses only, which I believe all of them do currently. Uh, that work needs to happen this year. I'm happy to answer any other questions about this. It's pretty prescribed by the state law. I have a quick question about this, maybe a slightly off topic. I'm just trying to follow it. Regarding the specific RHNA stuff, when I look at the maps and I'm looking at, uh, for us, it's page like 171. Um, and it's going to show RHNA sites that are vacant in there in that neighborhood. Can you just explain to me, as simple as possible, just so I can understand it, 
how those specific houses in that in that neighborhood are considered and what does vacant mean in regards to that. So are, are you thinking of things that are on this map? Am yeah, I like I'm looking correctly? at sites like 8081, 80, 85, yeah. 97. So they all have to be vacant, meaning they're not parking lots, they're not agriculture, they're truly like a, a dirt lot or a lot that has maybe some plants on it. It's a pretty strict definition by the state. So you might have other sites that would be also suitable for redevelopment, but in this analysis, that's what it means. Okay. Does that answer your question? It does, but I don't know that those sites are vacant. Hmm. I guess is what I'm, I'm looking at in that site specifically. Unless, unless I'm reading it wrong, can you bring up 171 and zoom in on that? Oh, for sure. One seventy one, yes. And this we had a comment like this at planning commission, but then it got resolved. I'm not sure if it's the same. Okay, so area. looking at that area specifically, those are not vacant houses. Mm -hmm. Those are not vacant lots, but they're listed on this as all vacant. And correct, correct me if I'm wrong, I may be reading the map wrong, but that none of those are vacant, not one of them. Yeah, I, I can't speak to it without like, looking at an area. I, when we did the analysis, the conclusion was that they were, so. Well, I'm familiar with the area. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I'm not trying to say that you're not right, but I, I just, I don't have any way to. Right. Say yes or no at this point in time. I don't know, maybe other council members can look in their districts to see too if that's a if that's a consistent issue. I just don't want to I don't want to be submitting something that's inaccurate. Do you know if has it, is there recent construction happening in this area? Over or? ten years old. No. Oh yeah. Staff has any other thoughts on that, or if we want to—that's not from the old uh, sites inventory, is it? It's not from the previous cycle. These, no, I would say, those sites that, that you're looking at right there were vacant right. at one point, yeah. and that's consistent. But that's consistent with maybe 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. I think that was all of those the Satterbergs that. Yeah, but all of those were probably the vacant sites in the last cycle because you know just from a historical perspective when I started here 10 years ago like you didn't you didn't have a neighbor correct mm -hmm. right so that might be that's why I was wondering if that's an old if that's from the cycle five inventory versus what's vacant for this future one but yeah those those are not those ones are not vacant currently We, yeah, we would have to see what it would mean to take those off um, if that's you know, what needs to happen. Yep, you continue. We come back to that if we need to. Um, I, I was almost finished. Maybe you just want to forward the slides. Uh, we just had a, I'm on page, slide 21, so just as a summary of the environmental document, the as I, excuse me, Holly already described. So uh, that was an addendum <coughs> to the general plan EIR. And then next slide, please. Uh, the project schedule here in terms of the second half of the schedule where we went through several rounds of review with the state and then um, are here tonight for adoption potentially as well as the final certification that we already talked about. So next slide, just lists the recommendation. And I'm happy to take any other questions. I have a question. Uh, you mentioned homelessness. Is part of the report, do they require like a number of homeless in Kingsburg? Yes, so part of the housing element requirements is to um, report on, usually it's the point in time count that's occurred 
this year or the year before. I can't remember if, if it's 23 or 24 that's in here. And then to talk about, you know, any local knowledge of where, you know, people are spending most of their time if they're homeless, and then also to make sure that there is land zoned for emergency shelters under the in compliance with state law, which is something that we did in the document. Do you know what that number was? I can look it up. That's okay. Is that the agency that came and reported to us that day? <clears throat> I think they came up with sure uh, it's very small. four, three, four, two, three, four. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, think I remember that it was quite small. It was a good number. Three or four. Yeah. And that's why they call it the point in time. I mean, it sounds like you don't have a high homeless need here in general, but it's on that one day in <clears throat> January or February when they when people volunteer to go, you know, look for folks who are homeless. So. Okay. Thank you. Do we have any other questions from council? You, you mentioned um, one of the actions was rezoning a few areas. So are we required to rezone those areas? And would they, that, does that align with, um, like if it's in our north specific plan, I mean, the rezoning requirements? I can't speak to whether, do you know if any of them are in a specific, the specific plan area? Some of them, I think they're multi-family. Um, could we go back to the map, please? So, so um, but are we required to take that action? If you want to adopt this document without editing it, then that is in there. That is one of the actions that's in there. It is one of the ways to meet your arena. Um, if that isn't the desire of the council, then uh, there would need to be more analysis to see how um, to meet the arena and you know end up with a compliant housing element. That's that's my take on it. If staff wants to say anything else, but um, that's where we kind of worked with the state reviewers and worked with staff to uh, come up with this plan in order to get to where we are now with the review. So. Just to refresh my memory again, I think it's sites 47 and 48, which are here. That's the rezoning. And 102 and 103. Okay, so all of the sites, I believe, are right in this area. I think not. Oh, oh, sorry. And 102 is over here on the east side. Uh, Mr. Mayor, if I may. Yes, please. So. <clears throat> uh, Holly and Amy have been relatively diplomatic. I'll, I'll be less so. Um, you know, I would say that Amy probably was on the venting end of a lot of conversations over the last two years uh, with Holly and I. I think there's, <clears throat> you know, a decision to be made by the council. I, I would say that without a doubt, upzoning to 20 units an acre or 25 units an acre is higher than any other zoning uh, that we have in Kingsburg. So, um, you know, there's a little bit of calculus there in terms of accepting that versus, uh, you know, having a compliant housing element and then dealing with what the potential reality is of an actual developer doing that based upon market conditions. Um, that's a difficult conversation that we certainly had and something that, you know, that's why it's in the presentation and you know want to have the conversation you asked a question about whether there's anything in here that would um, challenge uh, the preservation of the Kingsburg experience 95% uh, of what's required from uh, this housing element is probably going against what uh, we talk about on a daily basis <clears throat> I think the challenge is is that uh, communication with HCD is one way so they, if you, you know, just, I think she had four or five slides up there that talked about program changes. Those aren't program changes that are coming from staff or are coming from our consultant, right? Those are HCD and uh, California legislation changes um, that they, that are, um, you know, sort of one size fits all. And uh, so when they talk about, you know, 
Yeah, most of those changes, uh, there are challenges that we will have um, from an outreach standpoint that they require that they're happy to have, you know, places like San Jose or larger places do. It's very different when the outreach is coming from, you know, a department of, you know, one or two. Um, so, again, it becomes a, a little bit of a, um, I, I would, you know, also probably argue that the arena numbers that we've had in previous cycles were larger than what is preferred by the community, but the reality also is is that the mark, you know, cities don't build houses. This has always been our argument. We don't build houses. We don't build apartments. You know, the market dictates that. But um, certainly by having zoning uh, that's higher than uh, in those areas than what we have by now, then, you know, if a project comes forward, then, you know, that's something that we would have to work through. So I don't know that the market will ever support that, but um, that is uh, certainly a reality. And then the the, op the other option is is to not, if you don't adopt a housing element, right, then you're sort of in the position of like places like Huntington Beach, like that where um, the state, you know, sues you. Um, and Huntington Beach took them to court, just lost, I think a month, a month ago, um, California court told them to adopt the element anyways. Um, and so, you know, and then there's always, always the, the state can just come in and remove any of your ability to have say, right? They just, projects get permitted if you don't have a, an adopted housing element and you also don't have eligibility for certain, you know, state grants like the parks grant that we have for the dog park that we'll consider later tonight is a state grant that is dependent upon having a certain, they, they tie everything to a certified housing element. So. Not the happiest of, uh, you know, discussions, certainly, especially, you know, when we're talking about local control and what that looks like, and certainly as, when it, as it relates to housing, um, but, <clears throat> um, you know, also somewhat of the reality of the situation we face. So it sounds like, <clears throat> correct me if I'm wrong, it's kind of one of those, it's, it's not great for Kingsburg and what we're used to, but if we don't accept some form of a housing element, uh, we're going to be in a lawsuit situation that we can't afford. And Huntington did that lost. I, I think that's my understanding of it. It sounds like that's what you're explaining. Um, I do ha still have that concern if this is accurate. Can you, can you speak to that? I'm, I'm not comfortable tonight if that's inaccurate. Um, but again, you guys are the experts in this. but. If I, if I see this flaw in it and it's not corrected, I, I don't feel comfortable approving it. If At best, I would be tabling it. Yeah. But I, I would need to know, especially if we're talking about changing the arena numbers, I think that's going to change our overall calculation. Yeah, I think so. You know, some of it is, is time-based, certainly. I would say that for the portion in your neighborhood um, – is it right? I mean, so, you know, the calculation that we have for our arena number is based upon, you know, vacant sites. So, um, but is it accurate? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, vacant sites is, you know, they're just worried about your ability to uh, potentially put housing. Um, I think if you if we remove these, Amy, can you, can then you we have to find one? other vacant sites. And there's a hotel there, correct? Uh, I can't tell you whether or not it's correct that it's vacant or not without doing additional research, but I can say that there are different types of zones represented in the inventory. It's not all just residential zones. Right. It's mixed use and commercial as well so but the oh. allow for housing I think the hotel is just to the is a great out portion just north of the T-Mobile booth so just kind of east and south of there at the end of that cul-de-sac Amy can you speak to what this I know you said that without 
without substantive changes, um, this would get approved. If we're reassessing our arena numbers, is that something substantive or is it just we have to find adequate and equal numbers somewhere that is accurate? It would be considered substantive. Um, the, the review that is happening after adoption is a, a review. It's not different than any other review period except for that if you didn't make changes, there, they probably won't, wouldn't have any additional comments. So if, if we could demonstrate that some of these sites aren't suitable but there are others that can be swapped out or maybe you have, you have about 19 extra above moderate units, I just checked, uh, more than you need for your arena. I think if all of the sites on the other exhibit are not vacant, that's more than 19 units that would need to be identified. So I don't feel like I can stand here tonight and say we absolutely can just swap. We know we have what we need to get where we need to go uh, without doing more analysis. And, and I want this done. I, 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 want it, I want this behind us. I know this is a huge lift and it's a pain. I just, I, I don't feel comfortable if it's not accurate sending it. This is an eight year document that we've been working on for a long time. Um, but I'm here, I'm here to listen if there's something that I'm missing with that. You had mentioned about the parking lots, that it can't be where a parking lot is. I believe up here, 20, 21, 26, 31, and 32, I think are the T-Mobile parking lots, aren't they? So. Could be. So those couldn't be considered vacant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the challenge is we're gonna have to find uh, other locations. Yeah. So. Is there uh, what is council's thought on tabling this and giving staff some direction to just maybe go through those spots again to see? Would we need to have a special meeting because of the timeline? Well, I think our challenge is is that we go dark on in July, and so we're all, then that makes us late late July. And I think the other challenge might be that if, if some of these need to be taken out of the vacant sites inventory, then we may be in a situation where we're looking at increasing density in the, in the vacant sites that we do have. And that's a, you know, that may be, you know, a decision that, that, that's, uh, that council needs to make. So I understand, I understand your concern. Um, but we're, if we, you know. If we submit these as vacant and they're not vacant, what does that mean? What does that mean to the state? If we submit that 80, 84, 86, 85, 83, 81, and 79, if we submit this saying that they're vacant and they're not vacant, what does that mean? Problem. That's, and that's so, my concern. Yes. Well, I will, I will uh, take direction from city attorney at this point and, <laughs> and, and the consultant because this is, this is um, something that is not resolved, I would say, so. Okay, um, I think we'll continue with the council discussion. Um, Thank you. For consulting, yeah, we want to hear. Other, other thoughts from council about that? Or from the public? I know that our staff has worked tires, tirelessly on this, so. and you've been kept in the loop of the progress mm -hmm. all along. Um, it does concern me that it's not accurate, and I think that if we if we do pass this tonight, then I don't know what the state repercussions could be even on us as council members. Mm -hmm. I would be concerned about saying yes to something that's not accurate. Okay. Yeah, looking at the business park, I mean, it, it looks to me like there, there's construction going on in the business park right now. So what once was maybe vacant now is in process of um, being occupied, right? But then there also is, I believe, a corner over here, if I'm not mistaken, where it doesn't state that it's vacant, but I believe it is. So there might be a, a wash there, maybe. Um, but I, I would think that we would probably be in our best interest to reevaluate it, tighten it up, mm -hmm. and then go forward is my guess. Mm -hmm. 
based on what I see in the business park and what I know. Well, my thoughts are, <clears throat> I know it was the Planning Commission meeting when we looked at this. Planning Commission took a long look at it and approved it for us to, you know, approve, approve it to come to us to approve it tonight. My feelings are, you know, I trust our staff and <clears throat> if they feel we, we need to approve this, I'm ready to approve it tonight. That's how I feel about it. Yeah, yeah I, I'd suggest uh, I, we can we can table it for this evening and uh, <clears throat> we can talk with the consultant over what our options are and then um, you know, I think we table it to, we're going to need some time anyway as we table it to the, you know, the July um, 17 meeting. Does that give them um, enough time to meet deadlines? The state? We're already late. Yeah, late. I mean, I think, you know, we're, I don't know that there's a hard, um, so if we need to a hard deadline with regards to that. If we need to have a meeting earlier in July, we can have a special meeting. I think council would be okay with that if, if that's if that's needed. This is important, and probably we do recognize the work that's gone into it so far. We do. I know this can be frustrating, you know, adding one more thing, but uh, Mr. Attorney, did you have? No, I agree. I think that if there are maybe some inadequate. Inadequ inaccuracies in the report in the element that it, they need to be reevaluated. We can't send a report that it has other than from the standpoint that at the time that the analysis was being done the lots were vacant and subsequently construction has begun on those but I don't sound it doesn't sound like that's what has happened. So I think you need to table it to a date certain and have direct staff to go through it with the consultant and try to reevaluate the vacancies on the lots and come up with hopefully a solution to that that then can be adopted by the council and submitted to the to the state for consideration and if and if there if there can't be that without some upzoning or other things or densities that need to be done in order to um, comply, then those are decisions that have to be made by the council at that next meeting. Okay. With the understanding that there, as Alex pointed out, that there may be some hard swallows on that in order to yeah. make sure that the element gets adopted and gets forwarded to the to this state. I have some concerns on the rezoning. So if we could, when you're looking at that, I'm not, I just, I would I have some concerns on rezoning them higher densities. I, I can't respond completely to that concern right now because I don't know how many of these sites need to be reevaluated. It sounds like quite a few. The ones that we looked at at first, the higher numbered ones, are all for abo the above moderate part of the arena. That's a slightly different part of state law. So the minimum density of 20 and the maximum density of 25, that's for sites that are in the lower income category if we need to find more sites for that category. I don't know yet if we do. So far, it looked like a lot of the sites we were talking about were for the lower density above moderate part of your arena number. And that would have, there would be a little more leeway about what type of zoning you would be looking for. Uh, so at least some of the sites that were called out are in that lower density category. Sounds like we might be seeing you again, Amy. <laughs> uh, do we have any other council comments on the staff? If not, we're gonna, we're gonna close the public hearing and we would entertain, I guess we would entertain one of two motions. Either uh, the first motion would be to adopt the resolution, resolution as it sees fit, or the second option would be to table this until staff can have some time to reevaluate. 
um, will entertain either motion. Okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, motion is tabled till July 17th. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we will move on to item 6.2. This is the public hearing for the fiscal year 24 25 budget review to consider the 24 25 fiscal year recommended executive budget. Uh, sponsor of this is the city manager's office. We're going to go ahead and open our public hearing for this and have a presentation by city manager Alex Henderson. Uh, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, uh, in accordance with city charter section uh, 2.08.090 uh, sub G, uh, we're pleased to uh, recommend the city manager's fiscal year 2024-2025 operating uh, and capital improvement budget. Uh, this is a major policy document for the city for the coming year. Uh, and it's based upon the strategic planning principles as adopted by council, which include preserve the Kingsburg experience, financial stability, support businesses, community engagement, and community safety. We are pleased for, to present the budget, which includes the finance authority and redevelopment successor agency budgets. The fiscal year 25 all funds budget is uh, $29,681,491, including approximately $5.5 million for capital improvement projects. The fiscal year 25 budget is structurally balanced. Notably, the budget is projecting slightly lower than previous year revenues in several areas. Subsequently, expenditures have been reduced to ensure stability. This follows a national trend as consumers reduce spending as they exhaust post-pandemic stimulus funding and the effects of inflation lead consumers to limit purchases to essential goods. Inflation is also affecting the cost of supplies for local governments as well as driving up costs for capital projects through both higher wages and cost of materials. The financials presented this evening are substantially equivalent to those that presented two weeks ago. Minor changes and updates to anticipated revenues and known expenditures have been incorporated. This is due to the timing of sales tax data and other jurisdictions' budgets being finalized, uh, Measure C, for example. The changes have been included in this version to best reflect the budget for the remainder of this fiscal year, as well as to accurately forecast fiscal year 25. The document itself includes useful information about the city's history, demographics, as well as our challenges and opportunities in the year ahead. We believe it conforms to the Government Finance Officers Association standards to be recognized as a distinguished budget, an honor we have received each of the last 10 years. I would like to extend thanks to the residents of Kingsburg and City Council for their input in helping to develop this document. A special thank you to the city's finance director, Alma Colado, assistant city manager, Christina Windover, and city clerk, Al Abigail Pals Palsgard our entire large management team. This document could not have been completed without all of their assistance. With that, staff is recommending the council conduct a public hearing and adopt resolution 2024-033, approving the 2024-2025 fiscal year budget, including the Kingsburg Public Finance Authority and successor agency of the Kingsburg Redevelopment Agency budgets. This concludes my report, and I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you. Uh, do we have council discussion on this? Okay. Do we have uh, any public comment on this? We'll open it up for public comments. Okay, seeing none, we'll go ahead and close public comment and bring it back to council for any further discussion. It's a big document. We appreciate you guys working on it. I know this is, uh, this is a lot of work, too seems like everything that you guys have to do is a lot of paperwork and a lot of work. Mm -hmm. But this is good. Uh, I think it presents well. I think it's mm -hmm. it's a good document. I'm, I'm proud of the way that our budgets come out every year. So mm -hmm. thank you, and thank you to the Finance Department especially for that. Thank you very much. Uh, if we don't have anything else, any other council discussions? No, same as I want to thank staff. Uh, all the time they put in to get this document presented to us. Like Brandon said, it's very, it's very good. So thank you. Okay, we will uh, close this public hearing, and the item in front of us is to adopt resolution number 2024-033, uh, 
uh, approving the City of Kingsburg 2024-2025 fiscal year budget, including the Kingsburg Public Finance Authority and successor agencies of the Kingsburg Redevelopment Agency's budget. Thirty-three is the updated. We'll entertain that motion, but you have to read the whole thing. I'll make the motion. <laughs> Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. And that uh, public hearing is closed, and we will move on to item 6.3, another public hearing. Uh, this is for the Landscape and Lighting Assessment District, number 9301. It's consider approval of the engineer's report and levy of collection <coughs> of assessments within such district for fiscal year 24-25, staff report prepared by Finance Director Alma Collado. And we will open this public hearing. Uh, presentation by Alma Collado. Good evening, members of Salem City Council. The Landscape and Lighting Act of 1972 authorized the cities to impose assessments on benefit of properties to finance construction of a street landscaping, a street lighting, traffic signals, parks, sidewalks, repairs, and recreational improvement, as well as the maintenance and servicing of these improvements within the places within the boundaries of the district. The engineering firm of Wellden Financial Services has prepared in file with the clerk the engineer's report attached to this staff um, report that has reviewed all the maintenance costs, administration, and overhead collections in maintaining the streets landscape and lighting district. The total levy is 114,333 for fiscal year 24-25, which is 2,086 um, increase from current fiscal year. A public hearing notice was published in the business journal on June 7, 2024. The recommended action by city council is to conduct a public hearing to receive public testimony regarding the proposal of the fiscal year 24-25 assessments and to following the hearing take action to adopt resolution number 2024-034 or in the levy and collection of the assessments within the city landscape and lighting district. This concludes my report. Thank you. Uh, open it up for council discussion. Uh, do we have any public comment about this? Okay, we will close public comment and bring it back to council for any final remarks. Okay, seeing none, we will close this public hearing. And the <coughs> item before us is to adopt resolution 2024-034, uh, approving the engineer's report for assessment district number 9301 and the levy and collection of assessments within such district for fiscal year 24-25 and confirming diagrams and assessments pursuant to the provisions of part two of division 15 of the California Streets and Highways Code and as provided by article 13D of the California Constitution. Yeah? I'll make that motion. <laughs> Thank you. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, resolution passes. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to item 6.4, Community Facilities District 2017-01 for fiscal year 24-25 levy staff report prepared by City Manager Alex Henderson. Uh, on uh, June 7, 2017, uh, the Council adopted Resolution 2017-023 entitled the Resolution of Formation for the Kingsburg Community Facilities District. Uh, ordering the, the formation of the CFD and subsequently uh, each new annexation uh, and uh, qualifying uh, new development uh, is conditioned to join uh, our CFD. Public services that will be financed by the CFD levy include without limitation police services, fire uh, and ambulance and emergency response services, parks and open space maintenance, lighting and landscape maintenance, alley maintenance and repair, administrative fees of the city and reimbursement of costs related to the formation of the CFD. Uh, this is very similar to the landscape and lighting that we did just did, except for that it uh, um, uh, covers a little bit more uh, services. Uh, we do have a representative from uh, DTA uh, who's on Zoom this evening uh, who uh, can also answer uh, more specific questions uh, about the process uh, if council has them. 
That concludes my report. I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Uh, are you wanting us to go to a presentation to the CFD consultants, or is that just if we have questions? I don't know if he has a presentation or not, does it? John, can you hear us? Thank you. Do we have any uh, public comment about this? Okay. Council discussion? Questions? I have a, qu I have a question just for some clarity. I, I don't understand. Can someone explain to me why the difference between the maximum tax rate between the single family and the multifamily units? Why would that be? Why would that be different, and how do they come up with that difference? So basically, uh, to answer your question, there's a specific uh, requirement in the CFD law that uh, for each different size of the home, right, we need to determine a reasonable special tax formula, which that we can, you know, allocating the appropriate amount of special tax onto those residential units. Overall, we cannot as over assessing the multifamily homes at the same rate as the single family homes, right? It's not a fair proportionment among the residential units. So that's why you guys are seeing the single family homes are having a higher special tax rate, a little bit higher special tax rate than the multifamily homes, because they have, in general, those multifamily homes are having smaller housing sizes. Okay, thank you. Do we have any other council questions or discussion? Okay, seeing none, I believe six. Let's see, we're on six four, correct? Yeah, six, four. Uh, six four would be to adopt. Uh, what's in front of us is to adopt resolution twenty twenty four zero thirty five, the resolution of the city council uh, acting in its capacity as a legislative body of the community facilities district number twenty seventeen one public services district, authorizing the levy of a special tax for fiscal year twenty four twenty five. I'll make that motion. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, resolution passes. Thank you. <clears throat> Moving on to 6.5, uh, GAN limited option for 24-25, fiscal year budget fixtures, staff report by finance director Alma Colado. If you could just get the mic a little bit closer to you, it's a little easier to hear you. Thank you. <laughs> Mayor Purcell and council members, tonight's item is an annual process where the city council must approve a resolution to adopt the 2024-25 GAN limit for the city for the new fiscal year budget figures using the county growth percentage of um, being 0.69 or the city growth percentage of 1.04 for the spending limit calculation for 24-25. Attached in the staff report, you'll see the uh, calculation, and staff is recommending that the city council adopt resolution 2024-036, approving the GAN limit calculation for 24-25 fiscal year using the city growth percentage. By using the city growth percentage, the city is under the limit for the 24-25 fiscal year budget by 6.2 million. 
that concludes my report. Thank you. For item 6.5, do we have anybody in the public for a public comment? Seeing none, we'll bring it back to council for council discussion. Have any questions or comments? Yeah, I, d I just have one quick question. This is this has to be done annually, right? This Every is time not that we adopt the budget. Okay. <laughs> That's all. Any other questions? Okay, so what's before us today is to uh, adopt resolution. This is to adopt resolution 2024-036 uh, for the 24-25 GAN limit. Uh, entertain the motion. I'll make that motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion, resolution passes. Thank you. Okay. Item 6.6, .6, award the Laurel Street Dog Park Improvement Project base bid and additive alternate one to Donbury Construction in the amount of $989,270 and authorize the city manager to include additional <coughs> alternates for the contract as funding is secured for various items of work. Staff report prepared by city engineer Dave Peters. Presentation by Dave Peters. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor, members of council. Um, as you may remember, the Laurel Street Dog Park project proposes to build a dog park in the drainage basin. Uh, adjacent to Laurel Street uh, and Golden State Boulevard, so in the in our in the drainage basin that's shared with uh, with Caltrans um, and the City of Kingsburg, uh, we received a Prop 68 grant in the in the amount of 1.2 million dollars um, to to construct the project. The project's been designed uh, on May 17th. The project was advertised for construction bids on June 13th. The city received six responses. Uh, with uh, bids ranging, base bids ranging from $959,270 to uh, $1,229,555. Uh, the low bid uh, was determined based on the base bid only, not on the three alternate uh, additive alternates that was in the project. The additive alternates included, um, the first one was uh, for the building pad and installation of the prefabricated restroom building. Uh, at alternate two was the installation of trail lighting, poles and fixtures, foundations and conductors. And at alternate three was for the installation of three shade structures. Um, the Prop 68 grant funding is not sufficient to award the base bid and all of the alternates. Um, our grant does require that we uh, deliver a project that has all of the elements that were listed in the grant and some of those elements are in the additive alternates. So we've been working uh, pretty hard, me, <laughs> the last couple of days. Uh, we've got a couple of paths to get, um, to get us there. Um, it involves um, uh, making some adjustments to some of the items in the base bid um, switching out some of the items in the ad alternates, for example, the shade structures. We've identified some less expensive ones that we can that we could add to the contract. Um, so we do, we do believe that there's a path forward to deliver the entire project. Um, we're just going to have to make some adjustments. That's going to have to be done with the contractor after we award um, and through through. Um, uh, through adding back in the alternates and uh, a change order process to adjust some of the base bid items, which our contract allows us to do. So tonight we're asking you to um, award the base bid plus add alternate one, which we have sufficient funds to award. Um, the, the prefabricated restroom building's already been ordered and um, it's an element in the grant, so we really can't not do that. Um, and tonight's, uh, tonight's action will allow for, for the award. We'll be able to uh, issue notice to award to the contractor and then sit with, down with them, make those adjustments, and, uh, and get the contract within the grant budget while providing all the elements in, in, the, grant, uh, in the grant application, and we'll be able to complete the project. So with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. 
Do we have any public comment on this? Okay. Uh, council discussion? Questions? What's the timeline? For construction, yeah. So if we um, if we award tonight, we'll send the word out the notice of award out tomorrow. Most likely, have a pre-construction meeting next week that will include these discussions about adjustment of the of the base bid items and uh, and get the contract kind of squared away within the grant amount. And then, yeah, construction would start uh, in July, and we'd be able to finish by October, which is when we expect the rains to start coming back into the basin. So that's the goal: is to get under construction in July so we can be done by, by the time the rain hits. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Other council questions or discussion? Yeah, I don't know. These projects drive me nuts, i got to be honest, just because, like, it's like, you know, these bids and I, I have a hard time with them, honestly, just coming from the private sector. And so I just, like, look at the – the plan was one way, and now we've got to adjust it, which I get it. Sometimes you got to yeah, adjust yeah. on the fly, but now I want to know what those, like, adjustments look like. If we're going to adjust the shade structure, does that mean it's a lesser of a shade structure, which means we have more maintenance for public works, or it doesn't last as long? So those are the things I, that I think just, it's more just um, – I think that particular item, it would be more just, um, you know, kind of going from – the Cadillac to the Celica type thing. So I think maintenance wise, I don't think that would be an issue. Functionally, I think it will work fine. It just might not make the cover of architectural digest. Yeah. Okay. So that's that kind of that kind of thing. Is it is it downsizing like the no, actual size no, as well? No, like, no we've so already identified um, so just for example the shade structures that our landscape architect specified are about eighty thousand dollars each. Just just the just the materials, mm -hmm. just the structure itself, um, and we found some for less than ten. So that's the kind of adjustments we're talking about making. Okay. And, and they would be more in line with what you see kind of everywhere. So. Okay, that's all I had. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> Any other council discussion? Okay, so I believe what's in front of us today is to potentially award the bid to Don Barry, correct? If council sees that fit, we'll entertain that motion. I'll make that motion. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, thank you. Hope to see that soon. Yeah. yeah. Right. You, said before, you said before the next time it rains, we're holding you to that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, item seven, uh, council reports and staff communications. 7.1, Community Services Commission. We haven't met. 7.2, Public Safety Committee. Have not met since the last meeting. 7.3, Chamber of Commerce. I filled in last week for Laura. Uh, Dave was there at the meeting also. The Chamber spent a lot of time on the treasurer's report, uh, they were talking about some discrepancies in the sweetest festival funds, but that most of that was because they said some of the vendors hadn't paid yet, so they were going to, you know, wait for all the payments to come in and, and reevaluate that treasurer's report. <clears throat> uh, the chamber bylaws, they had an update on their bylaws. They've got new bylaws at, for the chamber. They talked about those. And now the chamber has a Venmo account. So that's Good. something new that they have there at the chamber. Uh, I believe the meeting was last Tuesday. They were going to they were going to have a hold down meeting that night around five o'clock. Um, and I don't know is the hold down still going to happen? It's postponed. It's postponed. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's what they were going to talk about because of not not too great of ticket sales as of last week. So they were going to have a meeting and talk about it. Okay, so I guess hold down is not going to happen. And then they also talked about uh, July third fireworks. Uh, they're going to charge for parking again and a gate fee. So that's one of their you know 
funds that the, that's the fund they keep there at the chamber just for the fireworks so that, that'll help out with that and then they also talked about concerts in the park every Thursday they're inviting everybody to go to the concerts in the park the next I think four more weeks I believe and I left a little early anything happened after I left not, I, not, not very yeah, much they just, adjourned shortly after yeah I was yeah. there for the, almost the whole meeting yeah. yeah okay thank you Dave yes uh, item 7.4 economic development uh, we did meet and uh, we had a sign presentation by A1 Signs um, that was um, looking at the, the sign in the business park to refurbish that, to get that um, repainted, um, two different options, um, digital option versus just a regular still sign option. Um, they gave a great presentation, gave us uh, some different looks and options. Um, the digital is obviously more expensive, quite a bit more expensive. So um, what the um, Economic Development Committee decided to do is um, have A1 do a couple different um, op options, to adjust the options that they had, um, maybe to make that uh, digital sign just a touch smaller. And um, then we agreed to um, poll different businesses to see what their appetite was for um, actually advertising on that sign. Um, I will tell you they gave a great presentation and the sign, if it turns out anything like some of the renderings, looks amazing and will be a nice showpiece for the city, um, for all the, the residents and people going on. 70,000 people going on 99 every day. So I think that's a positive if we can get that financially to make sense. Um, then, uh, yeah, then uh, there wasn't much after that. Just the quick corner still progressing, uh, 76 stations still progressing, Starbucks still progressing, some of the businesses that we already know, um, the Chico is still progressing as well. So all those uh, good economic drivers for the community once they get finished. So um, that, that concludes my report. Thank you. Uh, seven five, the finance committee. We haven't met. Seven six, planning. Have not met since May 9th. Seven seven, uh, SKGSA. We have not met. Seven eight, uh, downtown bid. Have not met. Seven nine is council of governments. We have not met. Uh, 710 council member reports yeah you want to go first or you want me to go first um, I have three things Do you want to go I have two things okay you go first. I'll be quick um, Kingsburg Health Care Care District meeting um, one item that is uh, noteworthy here um, they reviewed and approved the res resolution calling for election for two board seats and setting election spe specifications for Fresno, Tulare, and Kings Counties. So that basically means that they're gonna have elections on the two board seats, on a five board seat member. Um, and so, you know, that's open to the public. Who's up for re-election? Uh, that would be Orange. Lori Saunders and Todd Thompson. So if anybody was interested in running, they would, I guess, start the process in running. And so um, that's all I had on uh, the Kingsburg Healthcare District. And then I had one other. I went to a, um, the mixer last night, chamber mixer. I didn't. I don't know if I, I went in. And then it was split between London Properties and Magosh, which was really nice because they had tables set up in the alley. You could go into London Properties, have some you know food, and then you could go to Magosh and have a beverage if you chose to. And so um, very well attended. The weather was amazing, and there was really quite a few people that just were mingling and mixing which is what it's intended for right so it was a nice event and it was uh, I thought very successful so that's all I had to report report I just have one um, the Swedish Festival Committee has decided to name um, June Hess as the ambassador for the Swedish Festival and um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna mention that at uh, Midsummer is this Friday, 
at Coffee Pot Park at 6 o'clock, and we have asked her to, um, not asked her, we have re requested that she um, treat herself and buy a new dress to wear, um, yeah, to represent Kingsburg. She's a mess. Mm -hmm. She is. Councilmember North. Do you have anything to uh, The only thing I have is this This next, uh, I think the 26th is the state shoot at the gun club. Mm -hmm. um, I'd ask people to come out to that. I'll, I'll be there saying a few words for the opening of it, and uh, everyone's welcome to come out to that. Okay, I have three things. Um, the first thing is, I think it was a week ago, Monday, um, we had a Five Cities JPA meeting. They're transitioning to the name Center Point. And if you recall on Swedish Festival Day, we had all the um, social media influencers that came um, to showcase restaurants on the food trail, the Center Point food trail. Uh, so we reviewed how that went. Um, they had uh, 86,000 views on what the social media influencers posted. And I think they said like 14,000 shares so they said this does a lot more than a commercial or the news, and so it's kind of the new way of advertising. But I thought it went really well. Um, I shared some concerns about it being on Swedish Festival for us. That was that was really bad. <laughs> it was really hard on our businesses, and it was really good for content, but it was really hard on our businesses, and I shared with them that they had to make a place to give um, influencers free food and turn away paying um, patrons. And so they will not do it again on Swedish Festival. They are talking about doing that again next year in the budget. And I also talked about hardships on our mom and pop shops about just providing it for free. So they're gonna look at adding that into their budget where they can help with that also. But overall, it was a really good event. And so, um, also, I attended the band concert in the park. It's packed. They're every Thursday night. Um, the concert doesn't start until 8, but the farmer's market starts at 5. And they have a lot of food trucks out there. And then the next thing is, I gave you all lanyards, and some of you, I didn't see you ahead of time, I have extras. Um, starting on July 2nd, we're going to kick off an event, kind of like how we did Kingsburg Reads One Book, so a partnership with the community, the city, and with the school district. Um, we are going to have our theme be Summer Olympics. And so um, Chris Mitchell, I think it's called what's it? Hateful Cloud Ass, he does the, a lot of our murals. Um, he donated his time to come up with a logo, a Kingsburg um, Summer Olympics logo. Um, Denver Silva and his family, and then the Reeds who do the corner over here, they are donating their time and um, money to build out a Olympics theme on that corner that will be put up on July 6th. Um, my um, coworker Val and I have been contacting Olympians past and ones that are going to Paris. Um, also professional athletes and collegiate athletes and asking them to send videos to us that give a shout out to Kingsburg, um, tell us a little bit about their journey and then give one health related activity that's related to their sport. And so we've talked to businesses downtown, they're gonna put a poster in their window that has an Olympic sport and it will have our Kingsburg Summer Games logo and then a QR code in the corner and the QR code will go to the video that we have. Of the videos, so far we have 12 Olympians. Nine, Nine are ones that are going to Paris. Wow. Um, 11 professional athletes and three collegiate athletes, and we're still working on getting um, about two more. We should have that wrapped up this week. Um, one of the Olympians was my former swim coach from Kingsburg High School, Coach Blick, and so 1960s Olympics, so. We're excited about it. So what the kids do is, or families do, they'll have a scorecard, it'll be in color, and there's different categories that they will do. 
Um, so for the basketball category, when they do look at all those videos, do whatever the activity is and check it off, they go to the library, they'll get their lanyard, then they get the basketball to go onto their lanyard. Then we have softball, we have soccer, and we have football category, and this one's my favorite, boxing. <laughs> Once they get all five categories, they go back to the library and they'll give them an Eiffel Tower because the Summer Olympics are Paris. So it's kind of something fun for our community to do during the month of July. So the full month, uh, summer school ends the day before opening ceremonies open. Um, I, I'm hearing rumors that um, on the Larson's Corner that the torch will actually be lit. So excited cool. to see that. So. Did you copy that, Fire Chief? It's <laughs> fake. <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> it might be lights. Maybe yeah. you'll be the one lighting it. <laughs> so we're excited about just this community event. Okay. Well, City Hall is going to have four posters every Wednesday. Awesome. Okay. awesome. Thank you. Do we have any other council member reports? Uh, if not, the uh, city manager's report. Uh, just a reminder about the cancellation of uh, the first meeting uh, on July 3rd. That's uh, so traditionally when we go dark. And then um, uh, you'll see it in the carry tomorrow and also on social media. But uh, there are some, um, there's uh, when uh, during COVID or shortly thereafter, there was some CARES uh, funding that came. And we got some and we did grants for uh, local restaurants. Um, that has become a permanent fund in California. And so there are $5,000 grants that are available for local restaurants, non-franchised restaurants. Uh, right now, it's a very short uh, application window. It's on, it's open, I think, open yesterday or a couple days ago, and it's only open until June 30th. So uh, Jolene has already reached out. To, we have a lot of uh, contacts already with our local businesses to let them know. But if you see uh, local biz restaurant owners, just mention that to them to apply. Um, it's for employee training. It's for equipment replacement. It's pretty much... Uh, uh, I think every one of them would be eligible. Um, you just apply online. So that will also go out in the carrier tomorrow and then in social media next week as well. So that's all. For that, for those grant opportunities, is there a, uh, an exact number that Kingsbury is allowed to give out or is it everybody that meets the qualifications? So it's not through us. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a fund now, so they'll, I mean, everyone could apply. I don't know. You know, they'll only give out so many. Um, I think if you got it in the first, you know, in one of the first rounds, if you've gotten a CARE grant previously, you are eligible, but they are going to try and give uh, priority to those that haven't gotten it. But we're just trying to, you know, get the word out so that hopefully, you know, um, as many people here will apply as, as, as we can get. Thank you. Okay, uh, under future agenda items, we have none. And at this point, we will adjourn the regular city council meeting. Thank you. All those hand 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 wasn't bad. Hour and a half. <laughs> <laughs> you can, you still have